Welcome back. For our top domestic story this hour, we decided to take a closer look at how billionaire entrepreneur Elon Musk made all of his wealth. In a recent interview with Recode, Musk endorsed President Trump's plan to develop a Space Force branch of the military, saying, quote, I actually like the idea. Like, I think we could just have a base on the moon, for example, a base on Mars. Be great to expand on the idea of a Space Force. Now, why might Musk be taking this controversial position? It could have something to do with the fact that while the rest of us hear Space Force and see an expanding military, Musk hears Space Force and sees dollar signs. Considering his company SpaceX will likely be a top contender for government contracts to create the force. See, if anyone has mastered how to build a private corporation guaranteed to win government money, it's Mr. Musk. Take SpaceX, for example. According to Real Clear Policy, of SpaceX's total $12 billion in contracts, $5.5 billion comes from NASA and the Air Force. And that's despite the fact a government audit revealed this year that the company, quote, is raising the price it charges NASA to launch cargo into space by roughly 50%. But SpaceX isn't Musk's only project, which appears reliant on taxpayer dollars. His electric car company, Tesla, is thriving thanks to government subsidies designed to encourage environmentally conscious travel. Shoppers wealthy enough to even consider purchasing a Tesla automobile are offered enticing federal tax credits. Investors Business Daily reports that for every Tesla sold, federal taxpayers actually contribute $7,500 in subsidies, with states contributing even more. Overall, the LA Times reported in 2015 that Tesla owners received a total of $284 million in taxpayer funds, meaning the high cost of these luxury vehicles purchased by the well-to-do in society have actually been subsidized by you and me. The same is true for Musk's Solar City venture, considering the federal government offers a 30% tax credit for the cost of installing a solar energy system. The enterprise is yet another example of how Musk figured out how to game government incentives to rake in cash. And he's done well for himself, amassing an estimated net worth of $23 billion. As for the three companies which contribute to Musk's wealth, the LA Times reported three years ago that, quote, Tesla, SolarCity, and SpaceX together have benefited from an estimated $4.9 billion in government support, underscoring a common theme running through his emerging empire, a public-private financing model underpinning long-shot startups. With Elon Musk's wealth in question, we're joined now by Kevin Gustafson, an organizer with Democracy at Work DC. All right, Kevin, there's kind of this myth of the good billionaire, and Elon Elon Musk is one of the individuals constantly brought up to kind of fulfill that model. You know, they talk about how he doesn't take a salary at Tesla and how all of his companies are super innovative. Where does his wealth actually come from? So Elon Musk is, is one of the people, there is a, there's really a, a sycophanty around Elon Musk in particular. He's an interesting character, which is why I think it plays well. He obviously has a very active and um, let's say interesting Twitter uh, sort of persona that he uses to I think in some ways maintain um, in a very Trump style uh, his his ability to be in the public eye and, and mm -hmm. continually make news um, but the way he's basically become the, the person that he is is by doing what Silicon Valley entrepreneurs do they come up with an idea that is a small piece of a market that they know that they could exploit start the company by getting investors to to give initial startup capital, employ people at low wages so that they can, because they're a startup and they, they can't, you know, be at scale, and then uh, leverage that to be able to, in the modern, mo like, late stage fin finance monopoly capitalism, find some big player who's able to, to finally let you realize the profits that you've been gaining basically off the backs of your employees. Hmm. That what they do is essentially don't realize any profits. They stay, they stay really low in their profit margins and SpaceX and Tesla are still doing this where they're essentially not making any profits because they're banking on a big payout later. Mm -hmm. So while Elon Musk may be not taking any money from Tesla now, he has said that once it gets to a certain point, he will start taking money. And it's clear that these companies wouldn't even be making the money they are now without 
government support. So it's kind of a myth to view them as totally private companies. But people will still say, look, he's a genius improving solar uh, panel technology, electric cars, uh, the space program. These are all things we should celebrate, and he deserves the money. What do you say to that? Well, and there is some truth to that. I wouldn't say that that's totally not, not the case. The, the fact of the matter is that space, SpaceX, Tesla, Solar City, these are new, not necessarily new markets, but markets that needed a kind of person to, to shake it up and to make these a, a viable thing. But the thing is that that isn't just coming out of a development to, in the sort of natural market. This is a market that's highly regulated, it's highly uh, influenced by government actors, and so you'll hear libertarians, in which Silicon Valley is full of, complaining that this is, you know, not really capitalism, it's crony capitalism, something like that. What I think Elon Musk has really done is, is base, and he's admitted this, saying, that's fine with me. I'll take, I'll take the money where I can find it. And if the government has it, and the government's not using it in a way that I would like, I'm going to leverage my, my already amassed wealth through my selling of these uh, companies and do some investing myself and take advantage of all of these different uh, government handouts. And so, you know, you mentioned the, with, with Tesla giving the rebates for people who can buy them, which are usually well-to-do people. SpaceX has leveraged uh, the ability, like they have a, a launch facility and a testing facility in Texas. They got tens of millions of dollars in support to do that. They don't pay um, in income taxes in Texas and things like that. Mm -hmm. So there are decisions that he's making that are that specifically where they're going to be and what they're going to do is because there's money coming, not from the private market, though there is some coming from that, but definitely from the federal government. There's another issue here, though, which is the question of how workers for these companies are treated because there's, there's there's wealth being produced and coming in uh, but by, by these workers, but there have been issues at, at Tesla, for example, in the way you know, benefits and, and, and overtime are, are handled. What can you tell us about that? So the, the main theme of working for an Elon Musk company is essentially expect long hours, hard work, dangerous conditions, and not very good pay. Uh, Tesla workers make less than the average automotive worker, definitely, which are usually unionized shops by the United Auto Workers. Um, so they're making less wages and they work longer hours. They don't have any union protections. They're not able to bargain for their wages. And it's been something that's been brought up several times, uh, specifically at Tesla. And the issue there is basically there's been a campaign by Musk and, and the management staff of Tesla against unionization. Mm -hmm. It's a standard tactic by all major business owners that they don't want unions in their shop. And while Musk has said that this isn't the case and they could vote to do it tomorrow, the United Auto Workers have had a case for the National Labor Relations Board specifically saying that Musk has engaged in anti-union activities that are protected under the National Labor Relations Act. And so there's been a concerted campaign, not just on Twitter, and that, which there was a weird Twitter event in May, um, where Elon Musk was making claims totally unsubstantiated about the role of the UAW in the problems that the automakers are happening, uh, that are having, and uh, frankly, it was just not not true. But another example of the fact that there is in this asserted campaign at specifically at Tesla to prevent the UAW or for, prevent unionizing efforts and retaliation against workers, which is against the law. At SpaceX, it's the case where a lot of the workers that are working at SpaceX are really excited about the project they're working. And it's, it's one thing that I really find exceptionally annoying that we often hear Elon Musk sends, a, <laughs> sends his car into space. No, SpaceX sent the car into space. And it's based on thousands, tens of thousands of people who are working as contractors or part of actually SpaceX who are actually doing the work and producing this thing. But Elon Musk gets all, gets all of the, the, the credit. But at the same time, SpaceX employees are working really long hours. If you don't work a 10-hour day at SpaceX, wow. you're not working enough. And Elon Musk even famously uh, has said over and over again, according to uh, a worker, that basically you're not working enough Saturdays. Wow. The idea that the workforce knows that the expectation is that you're going to work more than the 40 hours that is uh, provided by law. Wow, and the, the struggle of the workers is completely left out of the mainstream media's coverage of any of these groups, while, like you say, they're always focused on talking about how, how great Elon Musk is and how funny and amazing he, he, he seems to be. So we appreciate you coming on and shedding some light on the shadier aspects of Tesla and all of his other companies. Thanks so much. Thank you. Hey YouTube, thanks for checking out our channel. We hope you enjoyed the video. We have tons of content for you just like this. For more of RT America's one-of-a-kind news and analysis, be sure to subscribe and never stop questioning more.